uh, welcome all. Let's let learn. Uh, so back to you, Kyle. Oh, okay. So you you, you can uh, always reach out to Brian through his handle, and also you can reach out to me through my handle on Twitter, or you can uh, PM directly PM on on, yeah, on WhatsApp. On the WhatsApp, even the WhatsApp, and also LinkedIn. I'm I'm active on LinkedIn, so it's easy to reach me there too. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, welcome, guys. Um, maybe just some house house housekeeping. Uh, I know we have, we all have lots of expectations for this session. Uh, I would have hoped it, it would be like a hands-on, but uh, from uh, we didn't do a poll uh, too bad on our side. But uh, from my understanding, it's just an introduction to to the tools. So it's just the basics first of all. Then now we can get a hands-on a hands-on session later, a follow-up hands-on session for for these tools. So yeah. Uh, Grass, Jeff, and Jida, what are they anyway? What are they? Why, why should we care about them? Um, Jida stands for the Special Data Abstraction Library. Uh, it was first released in 1998. Jida uh, has, has, has led to like uh, other, other data abstraction library being being developed, something like if, you, if any of you have heard of MDAL and PDAL. So, these are softwares that have gotten their inspiration from GDAL. Uh, GDAL is more like the, the de facto standard for GDAL, uh, de facto data abstraction library in the, in the geospatial uh, sphere because, because of the, the number of formats it supports. Uh, if you are a proprietary, a proprietary user, you nowadays, I think Actis Pro 2. Point something nowadays has GDAL support, and nowadays you can also even read. Uh, you can read something like uh, Geo Packages, which is fully supported in JIDA. And then comes the GraphJS. Um, it's not so popular as compared to QGIS and uh, ArcGIS. Um, who knows why? Nobody knows. I, don't, I haven't come, come across any study that explains why Grass is not that popular. But all of us, maybe some of us have had their experience. So GRASS stands for Geographic Resource Analysis Support System. It was started, it was first released, the first release was in 1984. Uh, if you, if uh, you, you are interested in a given software and you usually check the, the history or the inspiration behind a given software, you know, uh, at that point, it was like a few years after S3 Akin 4 was released. Then we have OGR. OGR comes alongside GDAL. Uh, before, they, they, there were separate libraries, but they, they were merged together. So if you install GDAL, automatically you have OGR alongside with it. So GDAL majorly concentrates on the raster data, uh, raster data sets. And then you have OGR, which now caters for uh, vector data sets. So uh, GrassJS was like the pioneer, pioneer member of OSGO. Open Source Geospatial Foundation, and then both, both these uh, platforms, both, both, these, both these tools, they run on across all platforms, major. So long as it's something because of the language, uh, Grass is written in C, GDAL is written in Magellan C and C plus plus also. So Grass, uh, Grass has a you know, Grass has a what we call it, a graphical user interface, but GDAL majorly you you interact with GDAL majorly through the command line. So uh, my, my guess is as good as any, any of us why grass has, hasn't been that popular because um, if you if you watched 2019 for 4 g sessions, I think uh, there was a session where they was uh, they were describing like bringing bringing the command line back command line GIS back. So th that was when the PCs you still had to like a text based a text based uh, interface to issue your commands. Uh, as, as I said, you probably using you you've been using Grass or or Jida. Uh, if you've used uh, QGIS and uh, done any raster raster processing, like creating uh, creating mosaics or virtual virtual raster bands, then definitely you've been using uh, Jida. Uh, if you uh, but, but a few years ago, that's like four four three years ago. 
if you wanted to extend uh, QGIS for, with some advanced uh, advanced GIS operations, you'd, you'd connect it to GRASS. As you know, the QGIS, QGIS processing interface allows you to, to add GRASS or Saga or, or, or OTB or uh, last tools. It depends. Besides the, the feature-rich uh, plugin repository that it has, um, they are fast. They are written in close to the native machine language that is C and C++. Um, they, are, they also support other... They, they support for other OSGO member projects that is like Postis, GeoServer. You can always connect them to, to Grass and and why, 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 why should you also care about them? Uh, uh, depends on your, depending on your workflow. If you are running the same process over and over and over again, then that means that, that uh, you can automate that uh, that process. If it is doing an analysis of a given area, and the, the steps you follow are always like it's all almost like predefined, then. Naturally, for me, I'd, I'd write a script. I'd write a script for that, so that the next time I'm given such a task, uh, I'd take like less than five minutes to to perform that task. Well, so it will be dependent on my on my machine capabilities, but I, it, I won't have to go through clicking, 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 clicking uh, buttons all here and there. So maybe I guess that's why it's not beginner friendly that much. Uh, so this talk is not about a comparison between Grass and uh, GDAL. And the talk is also, it is about trying to get you to appreciate the, the little stuff that text-based terminals and command lines do give us. Um, and finally, uh, on the introduction, uh, why, 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 why is Grass and GDAL not so common? And, not so friendly to beginners. As, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, the talk is majorly geared towards beginners, but uh, general, generally it's welcoming to everybody. So if you look till recently, if you search online, uh, there, there are very few articles or documentation describing how to use uh, GDAL and, and GRASS like directly. Most of the articles you'll find will be like, Articles on using GDAL through R or Python or Java or JavaScript, and the same the same with uh, with Grass also. But I think uh, Grass Grass changed their philosophy. They 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 um, their binding generator they changed from Swig. Now they they are using C Python types. So inter integrating your your extra modules in Grass is also easier. And then as I, as I mentioned before. I actually take it upon myself to get the philosophy or the motivation behind behind a software or behind a, a software being developed. So if you if you check on Grass when it was being being developed, uh, the technology at that time was uh, text based or CLI based. So if you're not familiar with the if you're not familiar with the terminal, the bash bash or PowerShell. Can be daunting to, to somebody who's not familiar with those, but then Grass does offer a, a GUI. So this is the ideal uh, ideal scenario that we would expect from having the Grass GDAL session. So um, we might we might not achieve all of it today, but basically, um, it's it's getting you to be comfortable enough to be scary to your colleague or like be hackish. So be comfortable enough with the common grass commands, common GDAL commands. So you don't have to like wait and launch a software to, for, for a software to launch so that you can process your, 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 your task. You can just uh, fire up the terminal and, and proceed. Then perform uh, some basic spatial operations using both tools. Understanding of the various workflows. So Grass and GDAL, they do have different workflows. You know, uh, GDAL, you just issue the GDAL command, and then with Grass, if for you to work with Grass, there's a, de a defined workflow. There is a reason behind it. Uh, I think if you if you listen to Mac Macnesola's podcast 
on grass. It, uh, he explains the 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 motivation and the reason behind the, the the grass workflow. And the reason behind the grass workflow is for reproducibility of of uh, of research and results. So that's why grass has a given workflow. So you can just share like a location set with your with your colleague or somebody else, and then they can reproduce your analysis from that. And then generally we're in a sensitive community uh, the mill the millennial community is sensitive let's be aware of others be friendly and patient open to all questions and viewpoints welcoming and among others please if you have gdal grass or gdal grass plugin install it it would be helpful to try out some of the examples so i've shared uh, i think two links already on the on the chat so you can try the the two the two links I, I think somebody said they were doing watershed analysis as their msc and there's a, there's a resource i just uh, shared there also so yeah this is what we'll go through uh GDAL introduction and installation hello all in GDAL, common GDAL commands uh, common ogr and osr commands and then if we manage the first four the first three I think on another session we can now start looking at RGDAL depending on depending on the language you are proficient in, whether it's Bash, whether it's R, whether it's Rasterio, whether it's Python, we can look further into that. Then further resources we'll just be sharing resources on GDAL. Then for grass, grass will be short because I think uh, understanding the the grass philosophy takes some time. Then. Start starting your first grass station, creating your own map sets and location geo, then loading, loading data sets to your to your to your new map set. Then a nice to have will, will be an, an actual model in case study. So for the follow-up session will be an actual case study where we try and and, uh, and bind all these workflows together. Since uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, you can you can always script uh, grass through the command command line or command prompt and also GDAL. So it's always advisable to like have a chain or a workflow or a pipeline for your for your commands. Uh, more like in, in, in the software well they call it they, they call it like a, a CI C D continuous integration. Maybe you can just con continuous modeling or something of the sort. Okay. So GDAL uh, the, the, this information is from the GDAL website. It's a, trans a translator library for raster and vector data formats released under XMIT style open source, licensed by OSGEOM. Uh, it presents a single raster abstract model and single vector abstract model, calling the application for all formats. So as, as I was uh, saying earlier, um, it comes with a variety of useful com command line tools for data translation and processing. So the, the, the capabilities can be accessed directly, that is like uh, invoking a call to the binaries directly, or you can programmatically use the, the APIs. So as of writing, that is probably this year, Dida nowadays uh, supports a variety of raster formats, that is 147 and uh, 90 vector drivers. So installation uh, installation comes uh, varies varies from your primary operating system. So a universal one would be using Conda, which should work across both from Mac, Linux, or Windows. Then for OS X, uh, I think Brian can comment on that. I haven't tried uh, using OS X OS X or GDAL on OS X or even QGIS or Grass on OS X. And for Windows, I think the, the easiest way I usually find to install Grass or QGIS is usually the OSGEO for W. It's more like, it's more like if you ever tried, if you ever tried out the other geospatial tools using uh, OSGEO Live, that, that is the OSGEO Live image, which comes with pre-installed. So if you want a quick, if you want a quick tryout of maybe grass gdal you can just download osgeo4w then 
check the express desktop install that should install like the stable release of grass qgis and jida then for linux distro i think that there, there are lots of linux distros uh, i'm a i'm a nac linux user so it's usually pacman ifns install ifns jida then for debian based users i think gubin gubin would, 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 would serve better but uh, the general the general command is usually sudo apt install jidal ifn bin and then lib jidal ifn dev but uh, if you have Q, if you have installed qgis in your system that, that is not uh, if you have installed qgis not the standard alone but you used either osg or for w or you used the official documentation that they used to install qgis then you should definitely have grass and jidal installed okay so some of the common commands that we have uh, hmm. we have OGI. these are these are jidal commands which you can try out uh, that is ogr info that is uh, getting OG, we use ogr as i said ogr to get vector information and then jidal info to get uh, information about raster ogr to ogr to convert so some of the common commands that you can use uh, if you want to get basic information about your about your data set that is with your info you just want to know what type of data you're having because definitely before you start doing anything to your data you will have to try out there yeah, what, what kind of data the number of fields is it a polygon is it a, a line yeah so we have OGR info majorly then uh, so as you can see the highlighted the green the green highlighted ones are the flags they are the the flags for each each and every so when you issue a, a command there are options that you you're supposed to, to options and flags for that for that command so you have OGR info iphone iphone format that should give you a list of uh, the, the uh, as i mentioned there are 90 drivers if you want to see all these drivers you can do OGR info iphone iphone format then you have OGR info your data OGR info so this would get you like information about about your data then now uh, if you want to list all features within that data this will list all those features and it will bring them on your screen it's like the print hello world yeah so then you have also OGR to OGR this gives you a valid list of a list of, of valid outputs for our output formats then you also have OG, OG, you definitely use OGR to OGR to uh, convert data, vector data also. You can convert between shell file to GeoJSON, from GeoJSON to a Geo package, uh, to the DGN, to a DXF. Um, just a disclaimer, I think I, I asked from the group if there's somebody who's ever tried that DWG, but uh, from the docs, you have to like build using OpenTiger library. Then also from OGR to OGR, you can query your data directly from the command line. That is, uh, OGR supports the SQL, SQLite and uh, SQL dialect. So you can do an OGR where you, you can search your query, then the output file where you want to store like the query results and then the input. Then you can also do another using the SQL flag. You can do a reprojection using I, uh, the iphone iphone t underscore srs and then the APS, the psg code that you want the output file name and the input file name then last but not least uh, we have an ogr to ogr append update this is like for updating a, updating a, a file and then the the iphone nln flag is for new layer name so when you're updating and appending you assign that new file the file a new learning okay then we have jida so jida info same as ogr uh, jida info format then you have commands like jida translate then jida build vrt so the, the, this command there the, the are lots of them and as i said 
there is no clear 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 like a guide guide out there that this is how you you supposed to use it so it depends on how cre- on your creativity on 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 the scenario that that you want to use in the same way uh in linux you can do an ls hope you're seeing my screen you can do an ls a or you can do an ls a l h so it depends on what you want to do or what you want to achieve with the, with the command so you, uh given these commands you can always mix the commands or change the commands as i was telling you before so i'm just to get the basic information okay. uh brian any questions as uh up to now no questions so far uh no questions does anybody have any questions uh okay yeah that's really yeah but uh maybe maybe something like i can add for example for me where i used um jindal and ogian stuff was um okay i don't know if someone has really ever published over over 500,000 data sets in a database especially polygons Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like for me, initially I was lazy. There was a time I had 600,000 buildings in, in, in Dubai and I just wanted to put them in database and I just uploaded them into QGIS and tried to publish. <laughs> and, uh, and QGIS was hanging in there for three days and it was funny because yeah, it didn't really even get to publish the old data sets, right? <clears throat> So when I decided to to use uh, the command line, the object to, to publish the data to the database, it it took like ten minutes. And so it was funny that I was trying to do this thing three for three days, but if I used uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it took it took ten minutes, and it was it was funny. It was like, uh, I was yeah, wasting yeah. time uh, in QG. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, oh, that, that, that gives like uh, I think the, the the time you were experiencing that, that problem we had uh, we had a chat yeah. and I, I was uh, I was also having the same problem where you given like uh, an extent I was I was given an extent like I want a fishnet grid for the whole of Africa now like you you you're looking at a solar solar off grid off grid solar solar or energy off grid energy sources and then you want to like look at the whole of africa as your as your area of study so the first step was to create a fishnet uh, or a, or a hexagon grids across the whole of africa so yeah. the person who, the person who the person who was the individual who was given the task took like two three days and then yeah as usual the software uh, segmentation falls we were using qgis we tried that gis definitely it was it was hanging yeah it was always crashing then uh, after a few research, after a few r and d r and d over yeah. we decided to like why not uh, try using a script sure. and within an hour we were done something that would take it was taking us like a whole day yeah yeah so it gets yeah it, i think it helps the the algorithms are more efficient and stuff um i think what people tend to face the command line like like now on your screen or you are using this maybe for uh, someone who has never used the command line and just use the interface might be scared yeah. of this but yeah we are just there to tell you that it's possible it is nobody was born knowing this stuff yeah. but yeah but yeah. You know, yeah we just learned and uh, uh, yeah so uh, 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 may, may, maybe a quick question uh, a quick poll from from the from the audience like the guys who are familiar with uh, I shall have the philosophy of if you if you're doing the the usually software the, the software philosophy where, where you start from a given base as you move towards a given goal so maybe just a quick poll uh, guys who are familiar with the command prompt or or bash bash prompts or bash commands then from there we can do from the bash commands then we can do uh git commands then now we can do a shared workflow amongst amongst uh, all the researchers within the group with a central repository i don't know that's mm-hmm. something yeah from my last step cmd anybody else was this command or the, yeah the cmd is the bash the 
the current uh, the terminals might be scaring to you, but it's uh, it's actually interesting. Just uh, is it? But okay, yeah, Git. Oh yeah, there's somebody who's familiar with Git. So it's, Git, yeah. yeah. So you can be familiar. It, 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 it doesn't matter so long as you're familiar with Git, uh, the command line. So as you can, so long as you can always maneuver through without without the mouse yeah. using your terminal. Yeah. Interacting with the computer without the mouse, yeah, it will be easy to yeah. pick up these commands and just do analysis with them. Okay. okay. So uh, I I just wanted to try out some of the commands that I I had uh, I have uh, written over here. So like OGR to OGR info formats, OGR info formats. Yeah. So as I, as I have stated, it gives you the list of uh, supported vector formats. Then OGR info your vector data. So that's clear. That's less. Let's try this one. Okay. Then OGR info. Oh, uh, and then I beg your pardon, guys. I'm sorry. I think uh, my QGIS has an issue because uh, I, I would have loved to replicate the issue in a GUI also. Uh -huh. So as you can see, the result over here. Uh, open. It's an S3 shape file. Successful. And it's a, it is a polygon. So if you try this, the next command with your info with the flags. And then, hmm. Get out of And the shift right now. So as you can see, this gives you like the extent information, the APSG, the feature count it gives like more information compared to like just the OG, OGR info. Then you have the AL flag. So as you can see, the AL flag is not really useful, but it lists all features within that within that shape file. So you can always stream out, you can, using I.O. you can always stream out that, that information. Uh, uh, Brian, is that from my side? What, I think, no, it's fine, you can continue. Okay, okay. Then you can try OGR to OGR formats. That is when you're converting. Oh yeah, you. Somebody might ask, uh, why do do you have to like do the OGR to OGR format if you have OGR info format? That gives you like the list of valid formats that you can convert to. It's more or less similar to. It has similar output to OGR info. Then we can try converting between data formats. So let's say you want to convert to GeoJSON, okay? That is the output format from from the slides. You can see if you're converting, you indicate the flag, the output, output format, the destination name, and then the source file name. So I just say convert. Then the source file name will be the shell file.
Oh yeah. It's a typo. So when I check my file contents, I'll you'll see if there's your JSON around here, there's a, a convert with your JSON. So if you do an OGR info, convert. I see now it's a it's a shell file uh, with the layer GDM. Yeah. So using that flow. As you can see now, it's a G, it's a G JSON now. Okay, so there are some other commands that you can also use, uh, like performing queries on your spatial data. So you don't have to always like. I, I know special, just special people, are visual people. They have to see when you do a query, is it actually the actual thing that you're you're actually querying about? But we have guys who are good in SQL. You can always try to. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You can always do your, your special queries using the where flag. And then you can also do an OGR to OGR, SQL, the SQL flag. Uh, then we can try the... Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I don't know if it's Brian's background, but there's like a lot of noise. I can, I can yeah, hear uh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, it's not me. Okay, I've muted to be sure if it's my... I've muted to be sure. Okay. How about now? Yeah, now it's great. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Great. So, uh, let's try uh, to do a reprojection for the vector formats. As you can see, the geometry is any unknown. Let's check. Even. So this is in, it is in WSG, uh, WGS 84. So idea to idea. Let's go, let's go right there. that should be Kenya, right? Uh, Nairobi area, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, the southern part of Kenya, southern part of southern, that is 37 south, yeah. And then we projected the file name at SHP, then the input file name at SHP. Mm -hmm. Just a disclaimer, never be afraid of the errors. It's trial and error. If you don't try, you'll never know. So getting a failed process to yeah. It was a, the flag format, so it has to be all uppercase and then the color. So let's see if the projected one is there. Okay, so it's there. We have it here. Then we can do the OGR info.
Okay, now yeah. I projected. So right now it is in uh, 37, ATM 37 South. Initially it was in uh, in uh, uh, WGS 84. Okay, back to the slides now. So that's just a test of what you can what you can get via via OGR and GDAR. So majorly I've just tried the examples in in uh, in, Vec in OGR, but uh, you also have the GDAR the GDAR formats. And if I'm looking at the time, uh, if time allows, I, I, I think we'll just do uh, like uh, one one uh, one grass like a startup of a grass session. But all these links and uh, uh, Brian, question. Uh, there's, a, there's a resource I was looking for from GeoGal's uh, yeah. OGR tutorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't get the GeoGal's OGR tutorial series on YouTube, but I think it is a good one for somebody who's just okay. starting out. Yeah. So if you, if she's, if she's present, maybe she can share her channel on the OGR to on the OGR tutorial series. Ah, okay, sure. I'll reach out to her. Yeah. Uh, you can reach out to her because I think uh, I bookmarked it, but no, not on on this kind of on this PC. Okay. Then then you have planets. Then uh, now the last two resources are from uh, Special Thoughts. And if you are a QGIS person, I know you know. Ujaval, somebody, yeah. So it's like a, it's a, a process based. Instead of just giving example, if you go through the, the whole, the whole course, the full, it's the full course uh, material for that. Then th this will be helpful for both uh, Linux and Unix and uh, Windows users. But I think the last one from is it from Dell, from Han van der Quast or somebody. I don't know. Uh, this is a book from, I think it is uh, ITC or Delft. So if you check that, that material, so yeah, it's like a, a course. Yeah, the one I shared before uh, last year, I think last year. Yeah, I shared that last year. So I think uh, they're they geared towards not the using the GDAL API, but just using GDAL directly from uh, the, the GDAL calls uh, directly. I guess that should be all, all for the GDAL introduction. If there's any question on GDAL, GDAL and OGR, sorry. Yeah, sure. Anybody can shoot a question like uh, someone has got a background noise. Uh, the background noise is easy to me, I'm sure. Because <laughs> 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 I'm also getting it. <laughs> what it is? No, no. Oh, yeah, it is me. Hello. Uh, I think uh, I, oh, uh, hello. Yeah, sure, Peter. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, sometimes back uh, I experimented uh, using Python. Yes. Uh, uh, with the uh, Python GDAL. Yes, yes, yes. For the, the geometry part. So, for example, when I create, I create a point. Yes. So how do I turn that into a visual? Or uh, maybe a polygon? You use that? Uh, Hello. Hello. Something after after I've created it, how do I how do I how do I view? You're asking how how you how you view it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as you've seen as you've seen in this in this uh, in, in in this showcase uh, where we're trying to see like the features within that. That was an output that was yeah like this one this long one. You see like for the if you're using it directly. Then you definitely will have to use a graphical viewer. So depending on on, on the on the platform you're using, if you're using a Python notebook, you can. You, if you're using a Jupyter note, Jupyter notebook or a, a studio, so, sorry. Uh, I'm listening. Oh, I'm I'm saying, uh, to the best of my knowledge, if you are creating a a layer or a point in in Python, then you have to have a viewer. Right, so you can either uh, import it to QG, QGIS directly and view it like as a layer, or load it via the PyQGIS uh, API. And then, if you are using a notebook like Jupyter Notebook, so
So maybe you can clarify if you're using a notebook or you're just uh, it's just a simple Python script. I was using uh, the Jupyter notebook. Oh, you are using a Jupyter notebook. So you can. If, 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 I think that's towards a much a much broader topic where, where you get into data visualization, but there are various uh, special data special data viewers. The, the quickest one I know of is GeoPandas. You can use the GeoPandas and Matplotlib integration. Yeah, and then now you use the the Matplotlib uh, inline magic on on, on the notebook. But if you if if you're just using the script only and you're not issuing like the command the, a command to show it, uh, if I get you correctly, I, I doubt if you'll be able to view it. Uh, that was the problem. Okay, so you are if you're using a notebook, they are they usually like, if you're using Mat uh, Matplotlib with the Qt as your backend or Darwin as your backend, depend. Or if you're using Folium or if you're using. The, that's why there, there are lots of uh, uh, visualization visualization tools out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I don't think it's a problem. It's just the invocation of like your uh, magic commands, the Jupyter notebook magic commands. Then now you can call like uh, maybe plt dot show the common one. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll send the cookbook and somebody can try it out and then share. Okay. 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 Sure. Brian? Yeah. Yeah, my so, own, I was clear why we are using Jindal. Is anybody not clear when and why or we should use Jindal? Oh, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I it, 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 <laughs> when and why you should use Jindal? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone has that question and they didn't ask. After after seeing oh, the yeah. command line and the ordering, I can just click uh, on the interface and. And you're wondering, you can usually you can usually <laughs> click. Yeah, uh. so instead of checking the look. command line, uh, uh, I don't know if someone has asked, but if someone is still wondering that, uh, yeah, I think we kind of answered it mm. directly, but but yeah. Um, okay, I can just answer it because uh, uh, for me, uh, when, when I found the need to use the command line instead of using, for example, desktop, it was just when, when you're dealing with the tons of big uh, of data, for me, I found that using um, GDAL was more efficient than using um, the desktop tools, be it ArcGIS or QGIS. Uh, so for me, that that's the point um, I don't know about or anyone else, but for me, yeah, it was just about uh, so much efficient with the handling tons of data. I think another reason might be for, for example, for someone like John, who will probably be working with the uh, German Aerospace Agency from FEM. Uh, so for example, for those agencies tend to have maybe just servers and maybe Linux and they just give you a computer, but you have to access everything via the Linux server. And so, and do the processes. So, in the end, you just have to learn the terminal and do such kind of stuff on the on the terminal. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, um, uh, mostly it's out of necessity. Yeah. Uh, why use the, the command line for demonstration purposes? Right now, we just uh, we're just doing like the the commands like that you can use. But uh, given why I said uh, given a, an actual uh, test case scenario, you'd have like a variety, a variety of uh, of of process you want to handle, like reproject this data, merge this data. So in an in, in a in a in a in a desktop environment, you'll have to like I know in Q, QJS you can do batch processing, but then you realize that the, the batch processing you are doing in QJS is basically a chain of uh, G of GDAL commands. If you do a GDAL warp, uh, if you project raster in QGIS, you'll find that it's a GDAL warp command. So if you want to do like, you want the process to be invoked without a human intervention, it's more it's more geared towards uh, RPAs, like geared towards automation also. So if you have a given if you have a given trigger, like a given scenario that should trigger a given activity within your workflow then you just include it in your home environment and then when 
the when your machine experience such a, a trigger it automatically runs the, the script you don't have to like be there I, I know there's a story of uh, somebody who automated their job and until they forgot how to do their job but well if you're doing it like regularly you're not supposed to be you're definitely doing it wrong if you're doing repeating the same step over and over again you definitely doing it wrong you should automate that process so that's more like the motivation for me so it's more like if i can do it within a, like a, an invocation of a small script fair enough for me but also depends with the, with the with the organization you're working with and the 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 the, the, the the frequency of, of like such processes if it's a one time if it's a one time occurrence then you'll definitely like fire up qjs or rackjs create a project finish up then submit the results but if it is something like is always requested it's always requested like well, i remember there's a time we were, we were being given we were receiving requests for for small smes around kenya and then the kadogo kadogo economy the like the small scale and then the mtumba guys the mama mama mboga around so it's a request that coming per region you do a, a request for kibera then the next time you told today we want to do dandora tomorrow we want to do somewhere in mombasa so you you, you, you have to set like if i'm given this kind of job these are the steps that i do like the the common steps that you do For instance, if you go to the office, the first thing you do is fire up your machine. If you can do a script that the moment you enter, you are in within the vicinity, like a, a proximity of like two meters from your, your workstation, then your machine fires up the moment you reach your, your, your workstation. It's already, it's already fired up. You just enter your password. Why not? Who would love that? Basically that. Uh, and then a response to Peter's Peter's question on uh, Jidal OGR cookbook. I'm not sure if uh, the resource has been updated, the, the one that you just sent. Yeah, it's runs 2015, Phosphon G 2015. So, so uh, also maybe to Peter, you should also check the if the API has changed. Because the f- first thing first, you should try, like, from from like an observation, the the, the print function clearly shows it's still in Python 2. So if you follow it like line by line, you might have to change some st- some stuff. And also, <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, yeah, I can't like write it. <laughs> ah, wow, okay. So maybe if if you trying this, you don't you don't like follow it line by line. I think there are some places you need to change. Oh, uh, this is this. Maybe I could also explain as such a scenario is if you tried using some of uh, QJS plugins, then you find that a given plugin is outdated. It was written in maybe Python 2. So if you're going to QG3, QGIS3 and you're trying to use a plugin, then you definitely need to use, um, definitely need to go and refactor the whole, the whole, the whole code to QG3. And also, since it depends on, uh, it depends on uh, Q5, you also need to change some, some of those stuff. So maybe just uh, do your own R&D and check check the if the api has changed completely hope yeah. oh, hope that one answers you uh, that uh, that will help okay then for for the link i think you also shared another link yeah i'm going to share the cheat sheet yeah yeah so head first when i can also throw the the link in the whatsapp group so that when we close this it doesn't get lost okay Oh yeah, I can see the cheat sheet. Oh, there, there's also Madapai, I think from Sarah Sarafi from Planet. She also uh, a Jidal, a Jidal, uh, a Jidal blog. Yeah, as you can see, I can see there's a Jidal app, there's an OGR SQL. 
but it's in Chinese. Actually, Google Translate can can help there. Ah, there's a question from Collins. You can answer in the chat. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not getting it right. Doesn't running in the command line only allow you to execute line by line as compared to using a notebook? So is using command line, is using command line automation. Huh. The ever, ever discussion that usually goes on, uh, real, soft, real software engineers don't use notebooks. <laughs> I think it, 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 it is a contentious topic. Uh, uh, if you follow NAM Focus uh, forums, you will you see like the, the, that was a heated topic. But huh, command line and uh, command line and uh, notebooks. I think the the difference. So this this would be a personal opinion, as opposed to like. What actually is this personal opinion? Because I've used notebooks, and for notebook it is cell by cell. As you said, the command line is line by line. Like it's like it's like Python. It is interpreted. So it is line by line. The first line is gets executed first. But uh, for notebook, it depends on which one you which cell you executed first. I'm not sure if that's clear. Is that clear, Brian? I think not yet. And I, I, I also doubt that. that, that uh, but if you go using command line, uh, I'll give an example of, uh, let's say, uh, GDAL, GDAL installation. Let's say GDAL installation. I'll just give a, a GDAL installation. Another geo. Yeah. So as 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 you are asking uh, Collins, you are saying it is line by line. But you see, uh, for for this de demo purpose, we are writing line by line. In an actual in an actual development or production environment, I won't write write like uh, line by uh, I won't issue the command line by line. But instead, I'll use a script. So. Let's just try uh, start the let's go. Oh, good. So it's So as 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 she describes, as Mother Geo describes, how to install, I won't go writing this one by one and waiting for it to 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 execute. I'll just include all this information. And the other difference might be. I'll make this into an executable. So as opposed to Jupyter Notebooks, in as, in as much as there are so many approaches that nowadays come where you can use Jupyter Notebooks to move to production quick, I think you still have to, like the, the, the cells has to be still executed in order and per session, which if a session is terminated, The commands will not be valid. But uh, as a father, I'll check further on that and get back to you. So anyway. Yeah, okay. So for me, I can handle, yeah, I thought I could share my 
Clean my story. Yeah. It's a private company. No, 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 it's a private, it's a company called. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was taking, yeah, I want to tell him also another, another option to, to really use the GDAL and the GR. It's just, yeah, definitely just writing also uh, the Python, using the GDAL Python APIs uh, to, so, to process if there's a long repetition task, you can also still do it yeah. using Python. It's still fine doing it with Python. Uh, the, the so, uh -huh. maybe just as a demonstration, I've just included like uh, these are the commands that I've issued. Uh, let me just uh, so th these are the commands that I would have I would I would have to run them manually to install GDAS. But then if I have a script like this, I won't have to wait for something to happen. I'll just issue the command. So uh, I'll make an executable out of this. And then GDAL. Then I'll just run the, code, the GDAL script. Basically, something like that. So, not sure if I answered your question correctly, but you see, it's a chain of command. Automation is basically what you're doing manually, invoking it as at, at a single command, or merging them to one command, and then as you can proceed. So, basically, that's the that's the logic behind it. Whoa, it's already full. Okay, so. We can do a follow-up on, on that question uh, later. And then also we'll share these resources with you guys and the slides later. So yeah. as I said before, I think I had a feeling. Uh, yeah, it was an overshoot. I think we can cover grass on another time. On another time. Another time, yes, yeah, so another day. Maybe, yeah. maybe after so, the G sessions. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, um, maybe just I, I know like experience that most people share is setting up grass is usually they, like grass grass GUI is not as friendly as Fuji's GUI and well we know the grass grass is based on WX widgets QGIS is based based on a framework and then QGIS is QGIS uh, the cute framework was more like the the new kid on the block back in the 90s and then they try to like make Ultra modern, ultra modern GUI. So I find QGIS GUI even easier than ArcGIS, but uh, that's personal preference. So most people find starting starting off grass kind of tricky. So I just wanted to like the the the, 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 the these uh, links I've shared. This one would be this one would be the equivalent of. Uh, this one will be the equivalent of QG's cookbook. If you if you if you've checked QG's cookbook, this will be the equivalent of QG's cookbook. So there's introduction, raster analysis, vector analysis, image processing, water flow modeling, data imports, solar radiation, shaded network analysis. Then uh, the other thing that uh, there, there are some hidden gems that people don't know about grass. There are some modules within grass that are really helpful. Uh, as we were, we were chatting with, uh, with Brian uh, earlier, earlier on today, I was just telling him about uh, they, they, they this bundle of like, oh, we have an S3, S3 deep learning model, the deep, deep, deep learning bundle, like you have to pay for, for that license so you can use the developer version. Then I was just telling uh, Brian, do you know, like, I just came to realize there, there's an R, 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 a, a mask R CNN on, on grass. That is, it, it is as a third party, but it is inbuilt, and then it offers you like a pretty neat uh, UI to just do your do your deep learning workflow using it. Yeah, here, yeah. this is the module. I n i i dot n n a n n 
Mascara CNN train, so you can check that. But before we can dive into that, maybe just a quick start. Uh, you can go and try out this yourself. So you can try grass. Uh huh. So we can try a grass session. Uh, if you start a grass session, you'll see this like grass needs the directory a JS database to store its data. Create now or if you've not already done. So the the J, J, grass JS database, the reason why I was saying there are different there are different workflows based on grass. So with grass it comes with a like a default, a default folder to store your like projects, so you have to create a default folder. I think I don't have one. Do I have any wrong? G. Okay. So, what we'll do, I'll just close this first. So, with Grass, you have to create a. You have to create a. You have to create a, a home home folder for Grass. So. I'll just create a directory. Uh, it's advised you create a directory called grass data. Then now we can try starting grass again. Uh, huh, still no, but you can see it picked up grass data automatically. Then it says no location found in grass data. So for starters, uh, what people do, usually you want to start with your own data, but uh, all most of these uh, applications, whether it's uh, an an operating system, uh, a, a programming language, they usually come with like examples and their own data. So if you're starting out with graph, you can always uh, click on the download button. So they provide like a couple, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, sample data that you can always start out with. So you can try this one then download. So it will automatically download, but it will download to that uh, folder. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay, download complete. If I close now, you see I have a graph location, then I have a map set. So within within a, a specific location, you can have different map sets. And uh, locations are based on, the, the, the general philosophy is that a given location is based on a given a given projection. So let's say if you're, if you're dealing with uh, somewhere 32 north or 35, north or south or 40 or 40 north you can if you're dealing with a specific area the, the reason why i was telling you there's reproducibility in grass so what you can share is just the, the grass location with your with your colleagues and then they can actually reproduce whatever you you are trying okay okay i think i'm having a debug error Okay. Uh, basically, that's that. Uh, that's an error on my side. I think my grass WX widgets, grass WX widgets has some error. It's a bit error. Okay. So as you can see, if you try and restart again, I'll try and create a new location. So you can always set the projection. You can either start from a given file. You can either start grass from a given file. That is, uh, you issue the name, the location you want, and then the shape file that defines that location. But right now, let's just try with uh, the PSG code. So PSG that you want is to turn 37. Okay. 
So yeah, this is how grass GUI. Oh, sorry. Let me just get some space. So you have a map viewer. This is like the layer. Then you can like if you if you've dealt with any GIS software, you can always get your work around through it. So you can always import vector import with full projection. So these are sorry. I think they still that nice. So there is a V import that 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 that, that actually does with the, the projection. Then as I was telling you, grass is interoperable with uh, with GDA. There is a V in OGR. So if you build in grass, you definitely have it. It, it, it comes with GDA. GDA is a dependency, so it shares uh, these common dependencies with QG. So they have GDA, they have Project Seven, they have Geo. The, the, those are common, like uh, common uh, libraries that are being used in, in GIS. Basically, that that I think we are. That's just for starting grass and the session. So, back to you, Brian. Yeah, thanks a lot, William, for for this. Uh, I think we can just call it a day. Uh, if someone has a follow up question, we can always discuss on the group. Yeah, and, but uh, and, and definitely next time. But yeah, if someone has got a burning question, you can still shoot it now. Okay, so maybe maybe just from observation, I yeah. think uh, grass is is kind of kind of like grass is widespread and it, it it's in depth. Yeah. So I, 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 that, that's why the, the session was just an introduction. So. It's an introduction with with, uh, with with the with the resources so that somebody can go and try them out themselves. Sorry, I think that's you, Brian. Now. Ah, there's some. Sorry, I really don't know where the sound is coming from. Then. Or my computer is cranking. What's the sound like? Because I really don't know what the sound like. <laughs> Anyways, it's uh, it's okay. I think yeah, we can call it a day. Hopefully, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely the next time we'll come. We we are having a grass jidal session. We'll start with grass since we've touched on jidal pretty much on the vector side. Then we'll come to grass. Then uh, the the jidal vector side. No, not vector, but raster. So if that's fine by everybody, I think we can organize the next session. And uh, from observation, I think one hour is kind of tricky for grass and Jidal uh, to be like combined together. Yeah, sure. So any question? And uh, oh, uh, I remember. Uh, is it Mojo? Mojo was was asking about grass. So from a from a beginner point of view, I think it's hard to like give somebody the go, the gotchas of grass because grass you have to have like start you have to, like in in the the dive in depth get uh, familiar with the with the GUI or the the, the, C, the CLI side of it. Uh, if you've used uh, R, I think R users, grass more. I think I, feel, I usually feel like it's more of uh, a niche-based uh, 
software like mo- epidemiologists, environmental modelers, those are the guys that you find like uh, they they are really really into the grass ecosystem because of its uh, its capabilities in, in envir- environmental modeling. So uh, I'm not sure if Mike is around. Uh, Mike can do an. Uh, I think Mike was supposed to do an R session, but there's also R uh, using R in, in grass and the grass in R. So you can call grass modules in R. You can call R modules in grass. There's also you can call QGIS modules in grass and grass uh, grass modules in QGIS. So that is as 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 of uh, as of uh, I think last year, either last year or 2019, when they changed from Swig types to Python C types. So basically, that's that's that, and thank you. Okay, thank you, and thank you everyone for turning up. Let's meet uh, next time. If there's anything, definitely the group, uh, you should just shoot uh, the group or DM or whatever, but yeah, the group. Okay, have yeah, well, a lovely week ahead. Uh, maybe just, just uh, Brian? Yeah. Uh, probably they, they could share feedback where we didn't touch, and then now uh, we can work on that. Like, where so- somebody specifically feel like, can you touch on this? Like, a suggestion on mm-hmm. basically using grass and jitter. Mm-hmm. I want to perform so. We, we, if there's a feedback like that, we'll we'll form the next session yeah. based on that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if if you could provide like, if somebody could just share on the group. Yeah, sure. It would be yeah. Yeah, for an input from the audience, and then now we could we could like gear the the presentation towards a given goal or a given specific a, a given uh, case study. So it's a, if it's a case study, it will involve all the spatial processing, and then it also involves the modeling in that part. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so if you have a challenge, just so we can use yours as a case study. Feel free to yes. sh- shoot it out on the group. Uh, uh okay so, okay thank you uh, okay so, so sorry i call you then then um and the meeting bye everyone it was good having all of you here bye